So here we are in QuickBooks Point of Sale and you will see that on the bottom of Pro here we have our employee section. Uh, if you do not have employee logins enabled under company preferences then some of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is uh, not really going to pertain to you. You may want to turn it on. I'm going to require users to log in. This will prompt me to make a system administrator or sysadmin password. So I will go ahead and do that. Okay, now that's enabled. Now we can see here that we already have a number of employees. This is the practice file. I'm going to log in as sysadmin so I can mess with some of the settings on employees. Password I just created. All right, we have an employees menu up here. It's going to show you your employee list, uh, security settings, changing employees' passwords, clocking in and out, uh, employee time entries, and time clock history. A few of those things are also accessible down here. So, first let's look at the employees list. Got a lot of different employees here. I'm going to make a regular employee uh, user for myself. So I'll say new employee. Login name, Peter. You can fill out all this information if you'd like. Some of that uh, will tend to transfer over to uh, QuickBooks for payroll if you're using QuickBooks for payroll. Uh, that's kind of the point of this clocking in and clocking out stuff here do all sorts of different things uh, with your employee information and notes about the employee. Uh, you can even define custom fields that have to do with employees if you want to track certain criteria with them. I'm going to create a password for myself, my own user. Alrighty. There we go. Uh, you can choose to track hours for this employee. You can also, importantly, give them a commission rate if you want uh, them to earn commissions on uh, certain items in your store. You're also going to want to make sure to uh, choose a security group for them. Uh, I would probably be a manager or owner. Uh, of course, you have regular cashiers that will probably be an associate. We're going to get to the security settings in a moment and you can uh, learn how to give your employees rights to do things in point of sale the way that you want them to have rights. Um, we can get there quickly here. You can also export employee information to Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and save my new employee, Peter. Uh, I don't really have much information in here for Peter, and Peter does not work hourly apparently. But otherwise, this is all of our employees like you saw before. You can print out this list, you can uh, copy one employee and create another employee by doing that. If you have a number of employees that are similar, maybe they have some similar commission rates and that they're tracked hourly and maybe they're in the same security group that would save you some time if you wanted to copy an employee. Uh, if you turn list edit on here, which we'll do, you can actually go right through and change information on the fly for uh, different employees. Let's see here, Peter, uh, we'll do Peter Smith, sure my number and address etc 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 let's turn my hourly tracking on let's see that I get a commission of 10 percent and I'll be a, a lowly associate alright so I'm going to go ahead and turn list edit back off and you can also of course export this list of your employees to Excel or view and edit security rights can also delete employees, of course. Let's jump out of here. I'm going to head on over on the employees menu to the security. Now there's four default security uh, groups. We've got owner, manager, assistant manager, and associate. Owner, of course, has every single right that is possible. Pretty dangerous. <laughs> Just kidding. 
actually uh, there's a few things the owner doesn't have that uh, uh, the, the person who by default does have these is sysadmin, the sysadmin user of course. So if you want your associate to have some more rights uh, I wouldn't actually edit the associate group just leave it at default and make a copy of it and you can call it associate2 you can call it uh, super associate something like that you can copy that group uh, now you can take the default settings and you can add um, more security or I'm sorry less security more rights uh, to this super associate or whatever you want to call them. You could have uh, you could have a super manager or a lowly manager or different things like that. Give and take away. Uh, as you can see, you can get pretty granular as far as uh, the different things you want to give access to. I could sit here and list them all off, but I'll just let them r let you read them for yourself. And you can go ahead and do that. Now that I have my super associate group, I'm going to allow Peter the login to be part of that. So I'm on Peter here. I'm going to edit Peter and I'm going to change him to a super associate. Alright, now he's got a few more rights than the regular associate. You know, maybe you have nights where you only have a couple employees on and you want them to have uh, access to do certain things that maybe a manager would have in the daytime. So you need to figure out who you trust. <laughs> All right. So um, obviously, changing employee passwords pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm in sysadmin right now. I'm actually going to go ahead and log out. I will log in as Peter. And. It's going to ask me if I want to clock in. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? So I'm clocked in now. As you can see, certain things are grayed out. Uh, Peter, even though he's a super associate, can't do purchase orders or receive. He can't do the end of day. That super associate probably should be able to do that. Uh, different things here. I can't manage time clock or look at other employees, different things like that, financial and store exchange. Uh, still pretty low on the totem pole here as the super associate. Uh, Peter can stay logged in, but I can switch users. I'm going to switch back to sysadmin. Now I get all my stuff back, of course. And as a sysadmin, or owner, if you have an owner user, uh, I can go and take a look at uh, managing clocked in employees. It's going to show me, oh, Peter clocked in at this time. Uh, maybe somebody left on lunch, and you're like, oh, I wonder if they clocked in or clocked out. Uh, you can go ahead and check here, and you can see, oh, Peter never clocked out. He's getting paid for lunch. I'm going to go ahead and clock him out. Now, yep, I want to clock out. Yes, I'm going to modify hours. Uh, the hours are going to look a little messed up in here because it's practice mode and the clock and calendar are all screwed up when you're in practice, practice mode here. Um, we can also go ahead and look at that time clock history. We can see that Peter has this much time. Now, if he was gone for all of lunch but getting paid for it, then maybe I want to turn back the clock on when he clocked out. I'm actually going to say, no, he left at 7.24. He only got paid for a minute. Go ahead and save that. There we go. Got it. Um, once you have a lot more employees clocking in and clocking out, you would have a lot more entries here. If anybody has uh, any sort of qualm about what you paid them or how much, how many hours they racked up, you can go ahead and check it out there. And that's the time clock history. Now you want to make sure that when somebody's doing a sale, they are actually on their user. They might have to switch users. Um, I'm as sysadmin right now, but when you have different 
users and cashiers logged in, you want to make sure that people get the correct um, sales commissions. So to make sure that that happens when somebody's doing a sale, uh, if they're not the person that's getting the commission, they'll want to make sure that they choose the proper associate on the sale. Here I'm going to get Peter commission for selling a baseball glove. Of course, none in stock. So now I've, um, even though I'm in as sysadmin I'm, and I'm ringing somebody up, maybe Peter helped on the floor with this sale. So maybe Peter is the associate that's going to get the commission.